So after liabilities and minorities, we moved on to paid up capital. Now, what we're going to look at, we're going to do a simplified one here. The first thing that we need to understand is the number of shares outstanding, which we have up here in the profit and loss statement. So what you can see is that we know the amount of shares outstanding for uh, this period. Now, what we're going to have to do is look at the, the change or the newly issued shares. In this case, it's negative meaning that they have bought back shares each year causing shares outstanding to fall and then what we need to do is we need to estimate what we think will happen over time now I've being simplified I'm just carrying that over for right now but there could be a reason why that's going to stop it's going to get larger it's going to get smaller but for keeping it simple we're going to leave it there so therefore we're going to say that over the years all that's going to happen is look at the prior period and make any change of what new issued or uh, retired shares are going to be and we can see our shares outstanding. We can calculate our average shares which we've done here by looking at the average of the prior two years so then all we have to do is just carry that over and we have our average shares outstanding. Now that allows us to get to our EPS right here by just looking at our EPS which is profit divided by number of shares and in this case for EPS we look at average shares outstanding so I can now copy that over and we've got our EPS. Now from that I can go back down to the equity section of the balance sheet and see that we have paid in capital of 4871 here. If we know that we have a certain number of shares outstanding we can divide that 4871 divided by the number of shares outstanding and we'll see the paid up capital per share in this case 4.5 so then it's a question of what do we think our paid up capital per share will be over time well this gets a, a little bit difficult because if we're retiring shares or if we're adding shares it could be at a substantially different amount so we would build in a little bit more detail here about new share transactions versus old share but for right now we're just going to keep it simple we're going to carry forward what we had in 2009 and so from that we'll be able to go back down to the equity section of the balance sheet and say we know the number of shares outstanding which we have is 1038 and we know the per capita or per paid up capital per share 4.5 so we can multiply these two together to come up with an estimate of paid up capital again this is a very simplified way of looking at it now the next thing that we want to do is we want to look at retained earnings now before we get into retained earnings in the balance sheet, we're going to have to go down to our retained earnings statement here. And what we can see is that uh, we can start off for our forecast period here and know that in the beginning of 2010, uh, we're going to start off wherever we were at the end of 2009. So that's all we're doing there. And then all we have to do is pull in the profit from up above. This is coming from AF14. We could double click on it and that would take us up to the line AF14-5028. We could press F5 and that would take us back to where we were. Those are two shortcuts we use to getting around a, a spreadsheet. And so we'll have our profit. The next thing that we have to do is look at our dividends that the company's paid out. Now, in this case, we can see that the dividends that the company's paid out is right here and we can calculate our dividend payout ratio by just looking at the amount of dividends paid out divided by profit. So in this case it's 49 percent. Let's carry that 49 percent over for the year and then that will tell us how much dividends that we will have. We can take that 49 percent, so 49 which is AF108 divided by 100 and multiply it times the profit and we'll come up with our dividends per share. We copy that over, we'll fill in that, and we can go down to our statement of retained earnings and we'll find that we do the same thing. We just pull in the dividends per share from up above AF15. Now we also have the same case that we saw earlier about other. Uh, other is a pretty big item here, but for right now I'm just going to ignore it and you could make an argument that you should try to forecast it but we don't know enough right now to be able to put that together so once we've got that retain statement of retained earnings then what we have is we can just fill that in by basically just going and looking at pulling it from that statement down below so here you'll see we pull it from uh, the retained earnings uh, line 70 here once we've got that in place then we're pretty much done 
Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the others here. Right now, I'm not going to forecast anything because there is nothing there. And then I'm just going to copy over our equity levels and our equity plus minorities levels. Now, we can also calculate a book value per share, and that's just looking at the equity divided by the number of shares outstanding. And so I've got a book value per share here of $13 uh, up to 15.8. And now we're going to check and see, does our balance sheet balance? We need to look at our assets minus liabilities minus equity. And what we'll see is that our balance sheet does not balance. And that's not unusual. It's very rare that you'd have a balance sheet that would immediately balance. And next, we'll carry on and show how you balance the